everyone, Katrina here, and today I'm going to teach you about Hessian matrices. Make sure to subscribe for more videos and watch to the end to see the full example. Make Let's dive in. So we've had a lot of previous discussions about derivatives, partial derivatives, and gradients. So essentially Hessian matrices are the next step up from gradients. So when we have multivariable calculus and we're looking at taking the derivative, we have to then take partial derivatives. And the reason why we take partial derivatives is because we have more than one independent variables. So that means that we have to take the derivative with respect to each of the variables and hold the others constant. And the gradient is that collection of first derivatives of f of x. But what if we take the derivative of the gradient? If you take the derivative of the gradient, you're going to end up with a Hessian matrix. Let's look at the formal theorem right over here. So if f of x is twice differentiable on some open region D, which is a subset of our R space, then the matrix of all second partial derivatives is known as the Hessian of f at x. So we have this new definition. So if we look at this mathematically, this is how we denote the Hessian. So it's very similar to gradient notation. So on the side, we'll just show you. So gradient of f, we can also write that as this upside down triangle of f, something like this, right? And now for the Hessian, you'll notice that it's basically like the gradient, it looks like gradient squared, but this just means we're taking the second derivative. So we're taking the first derivative of the gradients and we basically have a collection of second partial derivatives. And you can see here in this matrix, this is just gives you a feel of what it would look like and the pattern when we're finding the Hessian matrix. Okay, so I want to draw your attention to this other important theorem over here. So this theorem says that if f is twice differentiable on some open region D, which is a subset of R, then the second derivative of f with respect to xi, xj is equal to the second derivative of f with respect to xj and xi for all ij from i to n natural numbers. So that means there's a bit of symmetry here. So it doesn't matter if you take the derivative with respect to x1 first, then x2, or if you were to take the derivative with respect to x2, then x1. They will be equal so long as both of these functions are twice differentiable. So this helps actually speed up our calculation for our, our Hessian because that would mean that this value here is equal to this value over here. And we have that symmetry, which is really nice. Let's go ahead and dive into an example, okay? So for our example, we are looking at some function f of x and y such that it equals x cubed minus 2xy minus y to the power of 6. I wanted to draw your attention that this is equal to some function that might be x where that has two independent variables, x1 and x2. It really depends on the convention of your textbook that you're working with, whether you're using x1s and x2s or if you're using x and y. The main thing that we have to care about here is that n equals to 2. That means that there are um, two independent variables, okay? And that means that we're in the realm, again, of multivariable calculus. So this question asks us to compute the Hessian. And not only that, but we want to evaluate the Hessian at this point over here at 1, 2. So when x equals to 1 and y equals to 2. So we can't jump directly into the second derivative. Like taking any normal derivative, we have to start with taking the first derivative, then going on to the second. So in that case, for us, in this multivariable case, that means we're essentially taking the gradient first and then taking the first derivative of the gradient. So let's do that. So this here is our first, we'll say first partial derivatives. 
okay? So we'll start with taking it with respect to x. That means we're le letting y stay constant. So there's a few different notation. We can do f sub x, or we can do Leibniz. We can do this kind of cursive df over dx. And that means that we're taking the partial derivative of x, of the function with respect to x. And you can see this one here that I'm highlighting is our function f of x. So this is our f of x. Okay, so that means we're keeping y as a constant and treating x as our independent variable. So the first term here is found by power rule. Actually, same with the second one. This is a pretty simple, almost polynomial type case where we can take the derivative of each term individually because they're separated by um, a subtraction. So we end up with 3x squared minus 2y. And similarly, we're going to do the same with y. So we're taking the partial derivative of f with respect to y of f of x, which gives us negative 2x minus 6x to the power of 5. Now let's move on to calculating the second partial derivatives. So since we have um, two variables, that means we're going to have four second partial derivatives. Okay. So let's start with number one. So this one, we're taking the second derivative of x, of f with respect to x. So this is f sub x, x. And again, this can also be written as the first partial derivative of the first partial derivative. Okay. And again, we're going to use the power rule here. So this equals to 6x. Second one, we're going to take the derivative um, partial derivative of f sub x with respect to y. And this is going to give us negative 2. And by our theorem, we know that these two are interchangeable because they're both continuous, twice continuously differentiable. So that's amazing. That means that we don't have to calculate that again. And we can just simply take the answer as negative 2 as negative 2. And as like an exercise, I just encourage you all to try this out by yourself, just so you can have some more practice of calculating partial derivatives. And finally, for our fourth partial, second partial derivative, we're taking the second uh, partial derivative with respect to y, which is going to yield negative 30 y to the power of 4. Again, we're using power rule here to solve most of these partial derivatives, which is a nice and quick derivative rule. So now that we have all these partial derivatives, in order to find the Hessian, we simply just have to collect them and put them in their respectable locations. So I always recommend that you start off with a definition before you sub in any values. This ensures that you have the right placement for all your partial derivatives, and it reduces the chance that you're going to make an error when trying to put them in. So now we're just going to go ahead and collect them. So we have our 6x, negative 2, negative 2, and negative 30y to the power of 4. Okay, we're not quite done yet. The question asked us to evaluate the Hessian at a specific point, 1, 2. So let's go ahead and do that. So how do we evaluate it at a point? Well, all we have to do is just plug in that point. So this would be the notation. You'd write this bolded h of f and then your point, and then you're simply just going to plug that in wherever the x and y values are. And then as a result, we end up with 6, negative 2, negative 2, and negative 480. So great job, everyone. So we've learned now how to calculate the Hessian, which essentially is just the partial derivative, or the first derivative of our gradient. So we're just continuing to take another layer of partial derivatives, and we just have to ensure that our functions are at least twice continuously differentiable in order to do this. The Hessian has lots of implications in linear algebra. It helps us determine like stability and instability of matrices. So we're going to get into that analysis in a, next, in a subsequent video, but just make sure for now that you have this down pat, you understand how to take partial derivatives, understand what the gradient is, and then how you can go from a gradient to a Hessian matrix. If you have any questions, please drop them in the comments and give this video a like if you found it helpful. 
and please subscribe for more videos. I'm also taking video requests, so I look forward to hearing from you, and I'll see you next time.